Guns! This one's about guns. Sorry, I needed to write a good hook to suck people into the video right away, and that was what I came up with. Don't go away, this one's about guns. Greetings citizens of the interweb, Matt here, your hydro-powered ruler and guide to all things gaming and game development. I'm here this week to present yet another video showcasing our single-player medieval fantasy RPG that we're creating using the power of the Unreal Engine. Sorry about the delay for this week's devlog, I've been a little busy with work as of late, and the wife and I went to the Dominican Republic for a couple weeks to celebrate our anniversary. Now that I've got a couple months free, I'm going to try to be a little more consistent for you guys, and in addition, I may branch out in terms of content just a little bit to bring some more variety to the channel. Today's episode covers the gun creation that we actually created over two years ago, but since its creation, the system has evolved so much that I felt the need to make an updated video. If you're new to the series, we're going through and re-recording some of the older episodes just because they're a bit outdated. They cover systems that are completely different from when we created them, and aside from that, they were pretty bad. Anywho, it's great to be back, so let's jump in. So we've already covered the addition of guns in a previous video, if you want to quickly check that video out, I'll put a link somewhere here on the screen so you can pause and then pop back over. If not, let's keep steamrolling ahead. So guns are in our medieval game. Now when we first added them, I found the movement to be a tad sluggish. Nobody likes playing games with slow movement speed. It tends to make every bit of gameplay feel like the slow, floaty water level, which if we're being honest with ourselves, is everybody's least favorite level. As you can see in the older footage, not only does our character move very slowly, they also kind of feel like they're floating. I mean, just look at our slide animation when sprinting. Everything feels like it's happening in a zero-g environment or something. And not in a good way like Sandy's rocket. <laughs> hey SpongeBob, watch this! More like a, oh my god, why is this a mechanic in Starfield kind of way. So, needless to say, the system needed a facelift. So, that's what we did. We can run, jump, climb, crawl, and swim just as always, except now the animations feel a little more natural and you don't feel like you just took a dose of snail plasma. <laughs> Looks great, moving on. I'm not going to take too long in this section because it's going to be part of what a future video is focusing on. That being weapon drops and the rarity system. I'll give a brief explanation here, however. So basically the guns use the same tiered rarity system that the armor pieces and other weapons in the game use. Item rarity feeds into the formula to generate how powerful a weapon is. Basically, it's DPS. This is influenced by a variety of factors such as weapon rarity, weapon type, the player's ranged weapon skill, and their overall player level. This value, like other weapons in the game, is further influenced by the level of the character or creature you're shooting. Naturally, higher level characters will take less damage, and lower level characters will take higher damage. Next chapter. So, like I said before, Nightwatch contains a variety of skills that level up as you use them. Things like mining, athleticism, and melee combat. This extends to the ranged weapon skill as well, which is what items like bows and guns will utilize. The way the range skill works is each time you successfully land a hit with a ranged weapon on an enemy, you gain some experience points. The new experience system is now based on how much damage you do rather than the number of attacks you land. Before you would gain a set amount of experience each time you landed a hit, but I had to change this. I did this because obviously guns fired a lot faster than bows. This means that if it took one shot from a bow to kill an enemy, but 10 shots from say a low damage high rate of fire gun, you would get 10 times more experience for killing the same enemy just for using a gun instead of a bow. So you could theoretically just farm range XP by using low damage rapid fire guns. Something I definitely didn't think of when designing the original system. But hey, it's an iterative process and this is how we work out the bugs. Of which there are plenty, have no doubts about that. But don't all the best games have bugs? 16 times the detail. Add time. Today's video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. So as I'm sure most of you already know, your internet service provider can see your browser activity. You know, these guys. Dang it, guess you have to deal with our packages. How do I avoid their prying eyes, I hear you asking? Well, that's where ExpressVPN comes in. ExpressVPN puts a stop to all their nasty spying by rerouting 100% of your network traffic through their secure encrypted servers. This works by masking your IP address, which makes it a lot harder for people like your service provider 
big tech companies, and other weirdos who want to see what you're doing online to match your activity back to you and collect information on the way you browse, or the content you enjoy when using the old interweb. You know the content I'm talking about. The Star Wars sequel trilogy. You don't want your friends finding out you like those movies. Speaking of streaming, this is the thing that makes ExpressVPN a must-have. I'm willing to bet that most of you are all too aware of the fact that streaming services like Netflix have different available shows depending on your country. I myself am from Canada, but I love South Park. Unfortunately, I don't live in the UK where South Park is on Netflix. ExpressVPN unblocks restricted content, so you can just change your location and watch any show you want. They have 94 different countries to choose from, which means you can access any restricted content on the internet. So now, I can keep watching South Park. So with all that being said, I think ExpressVPN's a must-have. I myself use it all the time, and for this video, they're offering a great deal to the Hydro Gaming community. If you use my link in the description, you can sign up and get three months free of ExpressVPN. And a big thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring today's video. So, naturally, people keep asking about the demo and when it's going to be ready. To which I originally replied, the end of summer 2023. It is now October. Whoops. This is why I didn't want to make a Patreon or a Kickstarter or whatever other give me money kind of platform because speed bumps are inevitable, but at least nobody's financially invested in the project, except me, so I can rest a little easier knowing that I can just release the demo when it's ready. So yeah, gonna have to push that release date back just a tad, but what I can do is give you a checklist of everything that needs to be done before the demo release. So we need to finish the first dungeon, finish the tutorial quest, and finally finish decorating the first town. That's it. We're so close I can literally taste it. We've definitely come a long way since the beginning. I remember back when this was just a blank little developer room with the default Unreal Engine mannequin running around in it. Now it kind of resembles an actual video game with all the running, jumping, swimming, and horsing. If you want to watch more videos showcasing the creation of our game, I'll leave a playlist link somewhere here on screen and somewhere in the description. That way you can watch all the videos in order and see how the game is developed from start to finish. I'm so grateful for all the support the series has gotten and I can't wait to see where things go from here. This week's developer shoutout goes out to Jens. This wonderful human being just recently created a first person version of Overcooked. Need I say more? He's also made a few horror games and some wackier projects that I'm sure you'll find entertaining. And as always, when a developer gets a shoutout, they will forever be immortalized in the world of Nightwatch. So meet Jen S. See what I did there? The lovable townsperson who you can usually find hanging out just outside the town of Edenville where he spends his days watching the fishies from his comfy spot on the bridge. Is he plotting something? Is he imagining Santa clearing obstacles on a pogo stick? Nobody knows for sure, but one thing we do know is that his complexion is truly a thing of beauty. <laughs> and that's it for this week, folks. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and found it entertaining or informative in some way, although I highly doubt that second part. If you did like the video, please consider checking out some of the other content on the channel, and consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Your support goes a long way in helping the channel grow so I can spread my influence and eventually rule the world. Thank you for watching and get lost. <laughs>